Hello, Guardians. It is Ebontis here. It is August 15th on Saturday, and as you guys can tell, the Majestic Objectives have been complete. So we got one more set, the Magnificent. So let me go grab it, and let's talk about it. So the objectives themselves aren't that bad. Aren't that bad. Let's look at the stats. We got 59, 62, 56. Not really great. 62, and then obviously nothing too much. Discipline's pretty low there. Intellect's pretty low. Intellect's pretty low, and strength is fairly low. Eh, you know, didn't expect anything too high. Now the thing to make note of when you get to this point in the quest, you can actually now go into the European aerial zone and work on getting more packages. So at this point, as I've earned um, the set of armor, I'm supposed to be able to earn more packages, but there is another step to the quest to make sure you do. So make sure once you actually have acquired the Magnificent set, you go talk to Ava Levante before you do anything else. For one, gives me a random key fragment, one of about 500 that I've probably got. Okay, she gives me 30. She's got some bounties that I can do. No big deal. And then we need to check our quest log to make sure that we can get what we need to get. I got a random weekly bounty to turn in. Nothing else is there. But you need to make sure you get those 30 key fragments from her. That is what's going to allow you to start getting armor from the packages. So, for example, what I want to do is open the six that I've got to see if I get any pieces just to prove it to you guys. Speak of the devil right there just to confirm. So, we got a chess piece. From the package, same thing. It's gonna have the same requirement on it. This one actually dropped with 63 stats. Really high recovery and strength, actually. I've seen worse. So just a reminder for all of you, make sure once you finish all the objectives on your majestic set, go up to the statue and meditate. And then before you do anything else, move like two feet to the left, talk to Ava Levante, get the 30 keys, that, you, that she's going to give you for kind of finishing up that quest step. And then from any further packages that you've got, you should at least have a chance. Maybe not guaranteed. Of course, you're still going to get some crap from it. But you have a chance to get armor. So now, if you are working on getting reasonably high rolled sets of armor, and you don't want to, and you can't run the dungeon, can't run the raid, thing of that, of that nature, this is a set that you're going to be able to infuse all the way up to power limit 1360 which is going to last through season 14, if I can get that math correctly, because season 12 is going to be Beyond Light, and then season 13 and season 14, it will be valid as well. So you have this thing for probably a good 9, 10 months that you're going to be able to use this armor, continue to infuse it. So if you find a good stat roll that you like right now, it's going to be viable for a long time. And remember, you can put any ornament on this you like. doesn't really matter. But you're also able to earn the glow for these pieces of armor as well, which is the nice thing. So once I finish Pit of Heresy, all of these should be done. All right, everybody, there may be some weird editing in this video, but main thing is, as I was going through working on this video, I wanted to check the objectives and check a couple things to verify how things were going to work before I gave you guys all the information. So... Big thing is, as I, as I kind of sh showed you guys, once you get the magnificent set of armor, make sure you go to Eva Levante one more time, pick up your 30 tokens, so any more packages that you open will turn into future, possibly at least, future pieces of magnificent armor. And you have to be on that magnificent level for it to count. Now, once you get to the magnificent set, like the, the third level, I kind of have a piece of advice. What I would say is actually, if you are going to go for all three characters, do those first. Because when you complete an objective on the Magnificent set, if your other characters also have Magnificent armor, like you've taken them up the other two tiers, they're going to complete that objective at the same time. If, say, like right now, my Hunter hasn't even started, my Warlock is on Majestic, and I just did this one, which wasn't hard, by the way, it's why I was testing it. Um, I just completed this one. It will not automatically complete for those other two characters because they weren't at the same level. So make sure if you're going to do these magnificent objectives and you're going to consider doing this on other characters, make sure all three get to magnificent before you start doing these objectives. And you're going to save yourself a lot of kind of pain, heartache and more repetition on what's likely to be the harder objectives as opposed to stuff that's mostly related to time. Now, the objectives themselves go as follows. The Helm, you have to complete a Master Nightfall. Now, the Nightfall right now in Season of Arrivals, I'm recording this, is level 1080. 
Now it is doable at, you know, like 1060, 1065, just got to be a little more on your game, but this is also the longest season. So if you continue to play, you know, as you go through this season and others, you're going to get a higher and higher power, power bonus from your artifact, likely making the, you know, Master Nightfall a little bit easier since you're not going to be quite as underleveled. So remember, when you're going through working on any of these objectives, once you have the Magnificent set, you can always work on these. There's not like a time limit per se. Now, if you have the Majestic set, which is the one right before this one, and you don't finish all the objectives before the Solstice of Heroes, you won't ever be able to take those to the Magnificent level because you won't ever have the statue to meditate at. So that's the key. All your characters need to get to the Magnificent level before the event ends, if you're going to do all three. And then these objectives you can do later. You can do them in September. You can do them in October. You can do them in Beyond Light if you were waiting that long. But the key there is you're going to have time to do these. So just because, say, one week's nightfall isn't quite working or you don't like the three that are in the rotation before this event ends, you'll have plenty of time to work on, you know, like nightfalls and some of these things once you get to the Magnificent level. That's what's key. First one is going to be the Master Nightfall on 1080. Pretty straightforward. You just have to finish it. You don't have to do it in a certain amount of time, Platinum Rewards, or anything of that nature. You just have to get it done on Master. Now, it is not match made, so you are going to need teams for a couple of these activities, um, guaranteed. So you will need to find some people if you're looking for the glows, but the glows are pretty cool. And that's the reason I did the gauntlets. Now, the gauntlet is completed Nightmare Hunt on the Moon. The nice thing about this one is, now this is where I'm like, they don't match in difficulty level, so I guess they didn't make them all a pain in the butt. But the gauntlets is any level. I literally went in and did it in at the lowest level, like Adept. Took me like five minutes to run through. I did Omnigold, but pretty much all of them are fairly easy to do at that level. There's not even champions in those. And as you can tell, my shoulders are glowing. Now, the difference is the amount of glow from the shoulders that you're going to get depends on how charged up your super is. Currently, I'm just sitting in European Dead Zone and my shoulders are glowing like crazy. Once I get to the end of this thing, I'll use my super and show you guys what it looks like without your super fully charged just so you can see the difference. So the gauntlets are going to be the easiest ones for sure. Literally any nightmare hunt and you're good to go. Third one for the chest is going to be the pit of heresy. You just have to complete it. You don't have to solo it. You don't have to flawless it. So take a couple people in there. Again, it's not match made. So you can solo this thing. And I have soloed it before. If you guys would like a solo guide from me, I can definitely put one together because I've solo flawless this thing, which at this point I know this place really well. So there's, you know, I could probably put a decent guide together if you guys are interested. But complete the Pit of Heresy on the moon, whether you do it with multiple characters or solo, just got to finish the thing, beat the final boss, and you're probably good. So this one's not too bad. Uh, I actually really enjoy the Pit of Heresy. It's a fun dungeon to do. See, if you haven't done it, it's kind of incentive to go step into a dungeon, which is actually a lot of fun. This is the one that is probably going to make most people probably the most upset for one. And then two, also going to be one of the hardest to do. And it is seven wins in Trials of Osiris. Now, it does not have to be on the same card. It does not have to be like you have to get the seven wins and complete a card or go to the lighthouse or anything of that nature. You could get a card, you know, win one match, and then reset that card. So you're always at like that base level possible when you're going into Trials of Osiris. Now, if you guys are on console and you got a couple friends to play with, this one probably will just take some time. You'll have some wins. You'll have some losses. For those of us like me who are on PC, this is one of the rare moments where PC is going to work against us because there are, you know, cheaters out there. Now, Bungie's doing everything they can. A lot of people don't think it's enough. That's a discussion for another day. But it is probably just going to take some time to hopefully get into some random matchmaking. My advice on this, if you do get to the Magnificent set, probably work on it sometime during Solstice of Heroes since people are probably going to be working on it you know, more people are going to be on trials than probably usual on the weekends, as opposed to two months from now when most people are either done or don't care about this, and then you just have the regular, like, kind of sweaty people in trials. The sooner you probably do this during the event of Solstice of Heroes is likely when you're bound to find probably the biggest population, no matter what platform you play on, which is hopefully going to help you out. Finally, down here for the mark, defeat the final boss in Altars of Sorrow. And you have to do it three times. That's the key. So you have to beat the final boss. So you got to go through all five waves. And then you have to beat the final boss, which usually isn't too hard anymore. This is more just a time thing. Um, and you just have to do it three times. So Altars of Sorrow, probably going to be busy for a little while. And this is kind of a throwback to most things from Shadowkeep. Because Travels of Osiris came back. We had 
Altars of Sorrow, Pit of Heresy, Nightmare Hunt. The only one's a Nightfall, but that's just one of the harder ones. Most of this stuff is actually from this year, though, so it's kind of the final stuff to celebrate this year's activities. Now, to show you what the glow difference looks like, as you guys can see right now, I'm just kind of kneeling down. It's fairly dark where I'm at, which is kind of the point. And this is what it looks like at the moment with my super fully charged. Now, let me use up my super, get that off of me, and let's see what the difference is. Now, I just used my super, so as you can tell, that glow is much lower than it was. And then as your super bar in the bottom fills up, the glow is going to get brighter and brighter. And remember, the ornaments work the same way. So if you go into the, you know, store and you look at the ornaments, right now they're going to be fairly low in color. But as my super builds and builds, they are going to get brighter and brighter, each one. Now, one thing I will say, Bungie has actually kind of replied with Bungie help. And they've said, said the colored bundles that you get from Eververse, people are complaining they're not as bright as they would like them to be, or they feel they're not like as vibrant as, you know, they were kind of advertised in some of the pictures. So Bungie is looking into that. So if you're looking at them now and you feel like, hey, maybe they're not as bright as I think they should be, that's one of those things that if you don't buy them right now, you got a few weeks to see if Bungie chooses to change it or not. So remember, these are going to be universal ornaments, so you can put these things on any armor you want pretty much forever, which is cool. Um, because they are going to work as universal ornaments for all your armor. The thing is, you are going to have to buy them per class. Now, the price of them is a topic for literally another day, but it is 1,500 silver or 600 bright dust per class. Now, if you have a lot of bright dust and you've been playing for a while like I do, I could technically buy them all, but even for me, that's 18,000 bright dust, and that's a big chunk of what I've spent a long time to earn. But on the other side, this is $45 for armor ornaments, which... Again, you got to figure out where to spend your money. The topic of pricing and stuff like that is really a topic for another day, so I'm not going to dive too hard into that one right now, just because I could talk about that one for quite a while. But the ornaments are here, but remember... Sorry, not that. The fuller your super is, the more it's going to glow, and it also changes per subclass. So I'm wearing a void subclass right now, so this is what this one looks like. As you can see in the pictures, they're kind of showing the solar ornament. And it always matches. The solar is going to be that bright orange. The arc is going to be kind of that electric blue. And then the void is obviously the purple that you've got here. And also, remember, the ornaments will represent stasis in the fall. The stasis glow is going to be that darker blue, kind of with like some white undertones to it. Looks fairly cool. It seems like it should be distinct enough between arc and stasis. Yeah, they're both blue, but I mean, water's blue, so what are you going to do? So again, remember, this will also represent stasis when you get into Beyond Light. So these... If you're debating on ornaments that could be, you know, worth it for a while, these seem like they are going to be kind of a good thing to actually hold on to and get a pretty good use out of. If you want to look cool, these are definitely pretty badass in my opinion. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to say for you guys with the Magnificent set. Make sure you get all your characters to the Magnificent level um, before you start doing the objective so you don't have to do them multiple times, especially things like the Master Nightmare Hunt, the Dungeon, and the Trials Wins. Those are the big three specifically that I probably would want to repeat, especially if it's hard for me to find a group. Um, also remember, once you finish one character and you get it up to the Magnificent level, the second character that you play through is going to go twice as fast on all the objectives for the blue and purple armor. Once that second character gets all the way up to Magnificent, the third character is going to go three times as fast. So focus on one character, get them up to Magnificent, and the others will progressively get quicker and quicker. Final thing is... As you are sitting there getting still, you know, if you want to work on random rolls of the Magnificent Armor, you can open Solstice packages, and you do sometimes have a chance to get some armor to drop from these packages that will have a random roll. Now, though those three didn't drop any, but I did open a couple earlier, and I got two different rolls right here. As you can see, they're not dropping at, like, high level, but they are dropping at 1050, and I got a 63 stat roll and a 63 stat roll. So you have to get to Magnificent to... Again, to remember to make sure and use these solstice packages to get your chances at some other rolls of this armor, especially as this is armor that you can take farther into the future because you can infuse it all the way up to 360. That's the key. So if the video is a little weird and kind of out of place, it's because there was weird editing and I wanted to confirm just a little bit of information before I put everything together. But I hope you found this video useful. I hope you guys enjoy the, either the white glow or if you want to buy the ornaments, the colored glows. But either way, these are the things that you need to do to finish the Solstice of Heroes. And also remember the one glow 
you probably want to do if you're trying to get some of these triumphs and stuff done. And that's why completing the nightmare hunt is the easiest. Because I literally went through, I did the nightmare hunt, and I unlocked a couple more triumphs. So if you're triumph completionist, complete any challenge for any magnific magnificent piece of armor. That's going to be the glow hard triumph. And I think I unlocked one other, which is probably down here in my moments of triumph. This is probably one of those secret ones. So obtain the Magnificent Set is one of them, and then earn a glow on any armor. That's the two other pieces. There's one more secret objective. I'm not entirely sure what that one's specifically going to be, but we still have some time for that. And the Traveler's Chosen is not out yet. i got to get my Trials victories here, so hopefully I'll knock out two birds with one stone. But that is all I got for you guys. And as you can see, my super is back, and the glow is nice and vibrant for these white ones. So if I had the glow on all the pieces... I would be fairly bright here in this little dark hallway. So thank you guys very much for the support lately. If you haven't subbed to the channel yet, please hit that subscribe button and the alert bell. We are so close to 50k, it is not even funny. You guys have been amazing with the support, so thank you. Thank you very much. Um, if you know of anybody who might you know, find benefit out of this guide, share it with them. Uh, you can like the video. Uh, drop a comment below if you have any questions, opinions, or tips about this as well that I may have forgotten. And if you want to find me on Twitch and Twitter, it's Ebontus on both of those as well. Thank you very much. Have a fantastic day, and I will see you all very soon.